Is salt something that you should worry about in your child's diet? And if so, should you try to limit it? By how much? Why is this important? Why is this even something that you should think about? <laughs> These are all questions that I get asked quite often as a registered dietitian. So I thought that I'd answer them as part of this channel's Q&A series. Salt contains sodium, a nutrient that we all need in our bodies, babies included. However, babies cannot handle large amounts of sodium yet, which is why they only need it in very small amounts. And babies that get too much sodium in their diet can encounter a range of issues, which is why parents are often encouraged to limit the amount of sodium in their baby's diet. Two of the most common reasons why babies may receive too much salt is either that parents add it to the baby's food in the hope that that increases the flavor of the food so that their baby eats a little bit more, or as number two, the salt is already present in their diet and they're simply feeding the baby exactly what they're eating, which is why the baby's getting too much salt. A baby that gets too much sodium can run into a few issues. First, a baby's kidneys are still immature, which means that they cannot filter out the sodium as effectively as an adult's kidney would. So this could cause extra strain on their kidneys if they're getting too much sodium and potentially injure the kidneys. Second, babies are born with a natural preference for things that taste sweet and salty. So if you're offering your baby salt or salty tasting foods quite frequently, it can reinforce this preference and cause them to grow up preferring salty tasting foods, which you can see an issue <laughs> developing, especially if they start preferring things like junk foods, which tend to be very salty tasting versus foods that are less salty tasting naturally like vegetables. Finally, a diet that's too rich in salt can cause your baby's blood pressure to rise, and this can happen in adults, of course, as well. But from research, what's really interesting is that this effect of salty diets on blood pressure seems to be even stronger in babies than in adults. So it's definitely something to watch out for. Now, how much salt is too much? Now, babies under one year old definitely do not need any added salt. They can meet their sodium needs through breast milk or formula, and the amount of sodium that's naturally present in unprocessed foods. Starting from one year old, the recommendations vary based on where you live. For example, in Europe, the European Food Safety Authority, or EFSA, recommends that children between one and three don't get more than 1.1 grams of sodium per day, which is the equivalent of about half a teaspoon of salt. Whereas in North America, experts recommend that children get 800 milligrams of sodium or less per day, which is just a little bit under that half of a teaspoon of salt per day. Now, how do you tell if you've given your baby too much salt? A baby that's ingested too much salt might develop a condition known as hypernatremia, which is basically a condition in which there's too much sodium circulating in their blood. And a baby that has or is experiencing hypernatremia will show symptoms like extreme thirst, a doughy or velvety skin, high-pitched crying or agitation and irritability. And over time, if hypernatremia is left untreated, your baby can go from feeling agitated and irritable to feeling lethargic and drowsy and eventually unresponsive. But that said, these are extreme cases of hypernatremia and it's not something that's very common and definitely not something that happens from you forgetting not to add salt to your baby's food that one time. Okay, now how do you avoid or minimize the amount of salt in your baby's diet? Here are a few ways that you can do this. First, you can check the food labels and pick foods that have less salt. Now, when it comes to baby foods, most baby foods don't have any salt added to them, but it's definitely worth checking on the label. And when it comes to snack foods or packaged foods that you might be buying for your family or for your child specifically, I encourage you to look at the sodium and keep the numbers that I mentioned before in mind. So for example, if you wanna use the 800 milligrams of sodium recommendation from the North American experts, and you're looking at a granola bar or a nut and fruit bar that you wanna buy for your child, one that has 0.3 grams of sodium uh, per portion, so that's 300 milligrams, actually has quite a bit of sodium, but one that has 0.3 milligrams of sodium for that same portion is one that has very little salt. So definitely one is better than the other. Another thing that you might wanna do is add salt to your meals separately. And this is especially handy if you're uh, serving family style meals and you like yours to taste a little bit saltier. <laughs> so basically when you're cooking, reserve part of the meal for your child or for your children, and then add salt only to the other part uh, in the last steps of cooking. 
And actually, if you want, it could be even more helpful to replace that salt and add flavor through spices and herbs. It's a really good habit to get into. Although using that salt shaker for your own meals and even for your children a little bit is not the end of the world. If you're using canned foods, a really good thing is to make sure that you rinse their contents thoroughly before adding them to meals or before serving them to your child because this will help remove most of its salt. Oh, can you hear it? It's raining. Can you hear how hard it's raining? Can I continue filming? So I've gone from sun to intense rain. So if you're hearing anything, that's what you're hearing at the moment. But I'm just going to keep rolling with this because I don't have very many opportunities to film with a little one at home that is six months old and currently battling the chicken pox. <laughs> Gosh, I hope that you don't hear this. All right, where was I? Oh yeah, ways to reduce salt in your family's diet. So the last thing that you can do is try to minimize takeout meals or restaurant meals, um, especially for very young children, because any way that you put it, the restaurant is going to use more salt in their meals than you would use at home. Uh, so I'm not saying that you shouldn't go to the restaurant or you shouldn't order takeout, but if you do and you have a child under one, for example, make sure that you bring some foods from home for them just to be able to offer them a salt-free alternative. Now it's worth mentioning that as a society we definitely eat way too much salt, but this salt doesn't usually come from salt that we're adding to our own meals through the salt shaker, but usually sodium that we're adding to our meals through using processed or packaged foods. So if you're trying to reduce the amount of sodium in your family's diet and hence your baby's diet, it's a really good idea to try to limit the amount of these packaged or processed foods that you bring into the home. Of course, we all know that processed foods and ultra junk foods are not very good for us, but sometimes it takes the arrival of a baby or a child in the family for us to improve the whole family's eating habits. Now, with that said, there's no reason to go crazy with this. Your child is not going to be completely scarred by having a little bit of extra sodium that one time because you forgot to do the groceries and takeout was your only option. <laughs> so I wouldn't stress too much about it as long as you do your best to offer your child and your baby minimally processed foods most of the time that are low in sodium, your child should be fine. Now, I hope that you found this useful. If you like this Q&A format, please uh, give this video a like so I know about it. And if you have a question of your own, make sure to leave it down below so I can address it in future videos. On this channel, I share my knowledge and experience as a registered dietitian to help busy families and little ones thrive on a plant-based diet. So if that's something that you want to hear more about, I also encourage you to subscribe. And with that said, that's it for today. I'm going to wrap this up before the sun changes intensities yet again and see you in the next one. Ciao, ciao.